the outer uh, covering of the brain is known as the cerebral cortex. Okay, it is the outer portion of the forebrain. It's about a quarter of an inch thick and actually contains the most sophisticated information processing regions of the brain. This is the site where our most complex behaviors and our actions, um, for example, Mozart composing a piece of music, um, the site at which this occurs is actually in the outer, outer region of the forebrain. Okay, and the cerebral cortex is actually this whole region that we can see. If I were to take it off and stretch it out on the ground, it actually cover up about nine square feet. It's actually a very large piece of brain matter. But the reason that um, this brain, the cerebral cortex, is so crinkled in appearance is that it allows more surface, more brain tissue to be. Um, added into the brain without necessarily having to compromise the complexity of the brain and so this crinkled appearance is actually a very it's a it's an indicator of the advancedness of the brain in comparison to other mammals but the cerebral cortex once again it is actually divided into four lobes four regions and so we're going to talk about those next the frontal lobe um, is the first region. It is involved in planning um, and initiating and executing voluntary movements. It's involved in thinking, planning, emotional control. It's really a lot of you, much of your personality and your experience of the world and your experience of you being you is really the result of activity, activity in the frontal lobe. And so if there were damage um, to this area of the brain, um, and there have been certain case studies and your textbook talks about the infamous case of Phineas Gage who was a railroad worker and was laying a railroad pipe and in the process of laying it there was an explosion and a mishap and a rod actually shot up through um, the bottom of his head and out through the top of his skull and ironically amazingly actually lived through this experience but after um, he recovered from the injury itself. Uh, his friends and his family members noted that he had some very severe changes in his personality. He, before the accident, was generally a very uh, easygoing, you know, individual, very easy to get along with. But after this accident, after the damage to his frontal lobe, um, he turned into, you know, a very aggressive, very argumentative individual became very impulsive wasn't you know good at kind of planning out the consequences of his actions and that's because the frontal lobe was damaged one area within the frontal lobe um, that is important and uh, just know that the primary motor cortex is responsible for initiating movement particularly fine motor movements such as handwriting or people who um, like to you know you know, do needlework or stitch, those are also fine motor movements. Playing a musical instrument, that's a fine motor movement, and that's governed primarily by the primary motor cortex. The temporal lobe is primarily responsible for interpreting auditory information that we receive in our environment, and it has the auditory cortex, where um, the site where the most complex auditory information is processed. But the temporal lobe, the way I help myself remember what its function is, is I think about my temples, the temples on my head, and if I just kind of move, if I'm trying to massage my temples because I'm getting a migraine from looking at an exam or reading a book and I then you know tuck my hair behind my ears and suddenly temporal I'm thinking my ears auditory information okay so you can try that little brain hack and see if it works but just remember most importantly temporal lobes uh, interpret auditory information the next lobe in the brain is the parietal lobe and it is responsible for processing our physical information in ease, or what psychologists use the term somatosensory. Again, that word soma is coming up. It's just Greek for body. So any type of bodily information that you experience, such as, you know, touch, uh, pressure, pain, uh, temperature, so whether it's really hot or very cold, all of this information gets processed in the parietal lobe of the brain.
and it contains the primary somatosensory cortex. And so, and if this uh, particular area of the brain were damaged, it would actually impair your ability to sense where in where in space is your body and you can actually throw off your parietal lobe by closing your eyes and of course do this in a nice open area but if you close your eyes and spin around a few times and then suddenly stop and don't open your eyes people tend to report getting very very dizzy to the point of wanting to faint um, and that's because you're messing with your primary somatosensory cortex and so um, but if there were damage to this area this would also impair a person's ability to experience you know pain or sense you know temperature and that's actually happened with uh, some individuals the final lobe of the brain are the occipital lobes and these lobes are responsible for processing visual information and it contains actually a number of different visual cortices quite a number of them it's a very complex uh, structure but it contains the primary visual cortex which again processes some of your most complex visual information that you receive about your environment and if there were damage to this area of the brain it would impair your ability to see um, your eyes may be perfectly fine the optic nerve that connects your eyes to the occipital lobes could be fine but if there were damage to the occipital lobe itself your brain would not be able to interpret what it was seeing and so um, a way a student helped me kind of you know associate the function of the lobe with this uh, you know brain region was he said uh, that you know if you ever you know think about your mother and that your mother always has eyes in the back of her head she always knows what you're doing well that is kind of the occipital lobe you actually see with the back of your head so it's mama's eyes so to speak again however it helps you to remember it the last set of uh, cortices I'm going to talk about and this is a relatively new area of research it's not one of the four main lobes are these areas that we have termed association cortices okay plural for cortex because there's many different areas that are association areas throughout the brain and although scientists are not entirely sure what exactly their specific function is they do appear to be very important in um, integrating lots of our sensory information you know incorporating our visual information with sound information so that way when you're looking at somebody talking and you're hearing their voice you understand that it is their voice and it is them talking and that these are not two separate experiences as strange as that may sound Okay, and so and they also appear to play a role in planning voluntary motor movement.